Hey everyone, Zach Mason here. Welcome back to my channel. Uh, this channel is where we discuss biblical prophecy, current events, and dreams and visions that God is giving people and how it's all lining up. God seems to be warning us and uh, giving us advance notice of what's coming so we can prepare. This video, we're going to address one of the most important questions, what everybody's asking, which is when? When is it going to start? When is the big events going to start? Now, some things have already begun. If you've watched my channel for a, for a while, you know that more than two years ago, and I wasn't the only one giving this warning, but because of what we knew from the dreams and visions that people have been having combined with Revelation 6, we knew that a financial collapse was coming, and from the dreams, we knew that it was going to be initiated by a banking collapse. And now we're seeing that begin, okay? In fact, I'll remind you that Dana Coverstone had this, had saw this in one of his dreams uh, very early on. Months. I saw banks, bank buildings with the roofs being taken off. And it looked almost like alien abduction because money was just flying through the roof into some type of like a vacuum cleaner. I know it sounds kind of strange, but I was watching wealth just being taken. I so we had that dream uh, multiple, more, about three years ago. The banking collapse just started this March, okay? Which brings me to uh, what we're talking about today. We're trying to find out when does the bad stuff really begin? Because while the banking collapse is like this, it's, you know, what God showed you be ready in the plane crash uh, vision is that the plane is slowly going down. It's lost three engines. And when the fourth engine goes, it's going to just drop like that. So we're seeing the turbulence and most people who don't want to believe they're just looking for any news that this is going to go back to normal they just are trusting the government's going to fix it when the government itself is pretty much saying hey we're causing this we want the dollar to fail we want to introduce a new cbdc digital currency and that's why this is honestly happening they know what they're doing they're causing this so if the, if the governments and big banks of the world are trying to revoke this, how would it not happen exactly? Unless God didn't want it to happen, but he does because it's judgment. He's allowing it because it's judgment and he's taken away our God of money. But anyways, that's just one of the warnings we've gotten. But the question on all our minds is when, when does it uh, really get bad? And I think we may have some answers. I've got some data. It's not concrete, exhaustive evidence, but I'm beginning to get enough pieces of data uh, that I would say reaches the level of what I'd call significant uh, data, indicating to me that October of this year is when it may get really bad. I think we're also probably gonna have an interesting June. Okay, very interesting June. I think for the rest of May, it's gonna be up and down. You're gonna have a good month, I think, after that. It's not going to be such great news, uh, but I think October is when it gets real bad. But I want to explain that is still speculation. This is the most speculative video I've done. Okay. Why I don't have as much evidence for it. And so I'm not, don't hold me to it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to give you a warning. I'm just telling you that I have enough data. I think it was worth making a video about, but I, but it's not enough that I would take it to the bank. No pun intended. All right. So let me explain what I mean by the level of data. So if, if one person wakes up and says, I had a dream that the winning lottery ticket was one, two, seven, eight, five, maybe a person of great faith or tubular superstition, they might go buy a lottery ticket. I might do it. I don't know. I probably wouldn't with one. But if 100,000 people all woke up and said, um, I had a dream that the winning lottery ticket was 12785, and they all dreamt it the same night, that is not just significant, that is hard data. That is not a coincidence. That can't happen by chance. That's not a conspiracy. There's only two possible explanations in that case. Either God gave all those people that dream, which means we should go buy the lottery tickets, 
or somehow the government gained the ability to hack our brains and gave everybody the same dream at the same night so that we'd all go buy lottery tickets to pump up the education system. So I don't think the government has that ability. I know they don't actually. Um, but what we have in this case, so when it comes to the, the future Russia, China invasion, we have hundreds of thousands, even millions of dreams about that. When it comes to the two moons dream and a few other themes, the storm dream, a lot of these things we have a lot, tens of thousands of dreams about. But when it comes to timing, it's a very small handful and they're very mysterious and you have to really work to try to piece them together right. Why? Because God doesn't want to give everybody a date. He wants us to be ready at all times. Okay. He wants us to be ready at all times. If he told us, hey, I'm coming back November 28th, 2029, what would everybody do? They wouldn't get ready. Okay, not until then. They'd wait, right? He doesn't want that. So he communicates in a way that is constantly making us think it could happen any minute, but we're getting prepared. But he's accurately communicating. The problem is interpreting correctly. So he does that so that we're seeking him and always ready. And then afterwards, we're going to look back and say, God, you communicated perfectly. We just couldn't understand. That's how it's going to be with the Coverstone dreams uh, and all these other dreams, right? So that said, let me jump into, um, and, and that's what I mean. I have, I have probably five or six pieces of data. It's like five or six people waking up and having that lottery ticket, um, you know, one, two, seven, eight, five. So five people have that dream. I'm paying attention. I don't know that I could say for sure that's going to win, but I would pay attention if that many people had it. Okay. Um, so calendar dream, Dana Coverstone, calendar dreams. Here's what he saw. Dream. And in that dream, I saw a calendar starting January, 2020, and it was being flipped. And I saw January, I saw February, I saw March. And when March came up, the hand held it, and I saw the fin a finger underline the month of March and then tap it three times. So underline the month of March, tapped it three times. So to me, it was emphasis. Something's going to happen in March. And then I saw April, May, June. And when June came, the hand underlined June again and tapped it three times. And I saw June go up. I saw July. I saw August, and then I saw September, and I saw the finger underneath the word September, and I like emphasizing it, and tapped it three times. And then I saw October come up, and then I saw November, and this is when it got real to me in the dream. I think the intensity, uh, according to my Fitbit, when I woke up, my heart rate was about 180. So that was Monday night. It was also a night that I woke up not feeling very well at all. I was up during the night, not feeling well. But anyway, the minute the finger underlined November three times, instead of tapping it, I saw a fist ball up and it hit the calendar. And literally, the calendar exploded into the wall. The numbers seemed like they were 3D and they were falling. They were just flying everywhere. Now, in the description below, I have a uh, link to the video of why I think Dana Coverstone's dreams are from God. So if you don't, watch the video. Again, the reason most people, initially, he had like 400 million people view his dreams. But the reason most people dismissed him is because the things he saw didn't happen that year. Okay, but what he actually saw was he saw a 2020 calendar and a hand tapping March three times, tapping June three times, tapping November, uh, September three times, underlining November, more emphasis, three times, then fist punch, which would be the fourth touch of November. Um, and so people expected all the images to happen in that year. And then he had a separate dream about October and November, a separate one about November, a separate one about December and January. So we all thought those were gonna happen that year. But the October, November, and December, January dreams he had, he didn't say he saw for sure 2020 on that calendar, right? He assumed it. And he may not have looked closely enough at the lineup of the dates and the weeks to know which year it was. But I think, obviously, not all of the things that happened in those dreams did happen that year. But what a lot of us have said is that 
Why was it three times? We just took it as emphasis. In the Bible, emphasis is usually twice. But three times very easily could have meant the events that you're going to see, the violence in the cities represented by vultures, which are growing, by the way, if you're not aware. Um, the pandemic images, all the strife, everything he saw has been happening over the last three years. And it could have very easily meant three Marches, three Junes, three Septembers, three Novembers before the fist punch. So that would be uh, three years, 2020, 2021, 2022 of these images playing out and then the big fist punch, which makes sense. Um, if, we're in, if it's going to happen in 2023, that would fit. I'll also say there's ways to interpret it where it could be 2024. I, I tend to think it's this year, but again, when we get to it, when we see it, the fist punch is what we're kind of waiting for and don't long for it because we're not going to like life after that. Um, when we see that, we're going to be able to look back and understand everything very well. Okay. But that would be a legitimate interpretation. And I have some new pieces of information that have kind of specifically another dream called the 10 stick stick stream <laughs> in which it seems to be saying, God seems to be very clearly saying that the big bad month is going to be uh, the 10th month of this year or a year. And we think he's saying this year. I also have a vision that a lady in my Bible study had, which seems to corroborate that timing. And uh, then a few other things I'm going to mention. Okay, but let's uh, go into that. So the vision, let me talk about the vision first. Now, Dana Coverstone had another dream called uh, From Flesh to Spirit or Spirit to Flesh. I can't remember which way it is. I'll put a link in the description. Um, in it, he is hugging the bride of Jesus. You see him in a hospital room, hugging the bride of Christ to himself and uh, rejuvenating her, making her beautiful again. And beauty to God is obedience. When the church is obedient, we're beautiful to him. Jesus does not want an ugly bride. And the American church is very disobedient. She's very ugly to Jesus right now, or has been. So he is rejuvenating her. He's making her beautiful again in the dream. And then he tells her to rest, okay? I'll show you a couple of the clips right here. He put down the side rails, he lifted her out of that bed, and he just began to hold her as close to his chest as possible, and his eyes began to minister over. As he was, and I thought at first he was, was praying over her speaker, but he began to breathe over her. And in the process of breathing her, that's when he grabbed the hand, and that's when, he, when, when the skin began to kind of come back to life. The color began to come back to, to the lady. Pretty soon her hair was beginning to turn light, light shades of brown. She opened her eyes a little bit and looked around, and weight was coming back on it. And I was actually watching the body of this woman become healthy. It was as if life had been breathed into her at that moment. Finally, she catches attention to what's going on, and, and she asked to be put down. And the man holding her, he, said, he says, no, you're not, you're not strong enough. You need to rest. So listen to me. You just need to rest. She started to ask one more time, and he basically told her very firmly but gently, No, if you walk too soon, you're going to limp. You need rest. You need to heal up. And he walked towards the door, said for her not to try to walk too soon once again because she would limp. He said, You need to be able to run. You need to be able to run, so stick to the instructions. So he puts a lot of emphasis on rest and resting now not working yet uh later he has a another dream uh about a year later he had another dream august of 2021 the first dream was in september of 2020 uh august of 2021 he had a second dream called get out while you can i've done an amplified interpretation of that dream on this channel i'll put a link in the description in that one we see that there's a storm outside the hospital the bride of christ is still waiting and Jesus comes in now. She's scared to death. The hospital's starting to crumble and fall. And he says, now I need you to work. He takes her face in his hands and says, now I need you to work. <laughs> and then she goes about her work. 
He says, I'll be with you through the storm, but I need you to work. The work she goes about is waking other Christians up who have been living in the hospital. These are Christians saying, you know, saying the church is a hospital for sinners and they don't get better. They just live in the hospital. And um, so the truth is the church has an emergency room for sinners, but we're supposed to get better. Right? We're supposed to move out of the hospital. <clears throat> so her work to do at that time is to wake up believers and uh, get them to move out of the hospital, get them to also move into obedience. From you be ready, we understand now that the bride of Christ is actually a subset of the body of Christ. Not all believers are part of the body, but not all believers are part of the bride. The bride are those believers who have been walking with Jesus closely and have intimate fellowship with him. Okay. So, um, anyways, so there's the pattern we see. The, the bride is elderly, emaciated, and almost dead. He rejuvenates her, makes her young and beautiful, which means makes her obedient again by hugging her to himself. He tells her to rest. Then her work begins when the storm starts and the work she has to do is to wake people up, other Christians up to get obedient and move out of the hospital. And then the hospital crumbles and is destroyed and those who didn't get out die. <clears throat> those are those two dreams. Well, um, I thought about it. I said, okay, well, I know that in September of 2021, so a month after he had the second dream, my church had an amazing seven nights of prayer, a week of seven nights of prayer. It was electric. I still remember it. Other people remember it. We all felt the spirit like filling us. And all of a sudden we're all enlivened, quickened, and talking about repentance and obedience <clears throat> out of nowhere. Since then, I have heard, including my, the teaching pastors at my church, I've talked to multiple of them, and they've all said, yeah, God's talking to a lot of us about obedience. Um, Christians in other states, other places, they're all on YouTube. A lot of people talking about repentance and obedience all the time. So I believe he began rejuvenating the bride of Christ in September of 2021, one month after Coverstone had that first dream, that second dream, and a year after the first dream. Then last uh, November, December, suddenly a lot of the Christians I know God began speaking to them about rest and telling them to rest. And even for getting, allowing several of them to get very serious, some of the more active ones who like did ministry all the time, they got sick and the and serious sicknesses. And it was almost like he was forcing them to rest because they, they said he's talking about rest. And then next thing you know, they're sick. And it was like, that was the only way to, for him to make them rest. I know he's also spoken that uh, same thing. My uh, One of the teaching pastors of my church, same thing. Later, about a year after he talked about repentance, he mentioned that God had been talking to him about rest. I myself, he's been talking to me about rest, and I've been kind of fighting it at times. I want to do, I want to go. But he keeps telling me, rest. Why? Because the work we have to do uh, we're not to, in earnest is not yet. When the storm starts, that's when we uh, begin doing the work of waking people up in earnest. And if we try to do it before they're ready, we're going to hurt our relationships. And then later it'll be harder for us to go out and do ministry with those people we've hurt relationships with. So that's what he means. If you get up too early, you're going to limp. You're going out will be injured. Okay. So anyways, I looked at that. So, okay, so September 2021 uh, is uh, when he began uh, rejuvenating us. How long is this process? Well, in late March, a lady in my Bible, Monday morning Bible study said, we had a Q&A session at the end, and she just said, I had this very freaky uh, vision. I wasn't even asleep, and it just scared me so bad. I don't know what it means. And... Um, I said, okay, what was it? You know, what, what happened? She said, well, I was just like awake and I, all of a sudden this woman's face, like this 50 year old woman's face was like in front of mine 
and it started getting younger. And, uh, and she said, I was so scared because I thought it was a demon or something. I didn't understand it. And, and then as she explained more, she said there was actually something before that. It was like this plant came up out of the ground and then it withered. And now the first half of the dream where Jesus pulls the bride to himself and rejuvenates her, uh, the first half is about a forest of dead trees, of trees that have withered, have no leaves and no fruit. So her vision had the exact same two halves. And I, you know, asked her and she confirmed, no, she did not know about the Dana Coverstone dreams. She doesn't watch every video on my channel. She definitely, I knew she didn't, she was telling me the truth. She hadn't seen it, yet she had exact same vision. But what I noticed was, and I think that God gave it to her knowing it would get back to me. Uh, and I would analyze it like I do. So... I started thinking about it. She said, 50 year old woman. That struck me because the lady in Dana Coverstone's dream was very old when she started. So if I started to guess, okay, what kind of ages do we think the beginning and end age were? Well, he just, Coverstone described an emaciated woman on life support, which I'm gonna say 90 roughly. It's an estimate. Could have been 100, could have been 80. Let's say 90 for the sake of argument. What would be the final age? Well, you could say early 20s, but there's a law uh, in the law of Moses that says that priests were not allowed to serve, Levites were not allowed to serve until they're 30 years of age. And that's why Jesus did not begin his ministry until he was 30. So, I don't believe if he's got a work for the bride of Christ to do, he's going to rejuvenate her past 30, so to speak, right? 30 seems like a good final age to estimate. So that would be 90 to 30, 60 years. And if September 2021 was the beginning, March 2023 was at 50 years old, and that means that 40 years have been rejuvenated so far, 20 years remain, 50 to 30, means two thirds is done, one third remains. So a year and a half has been done. So another half a, uh, so half of that, which would be nine months would remain after that, which would put us in December, which lines up roughly with the Coverstone dreams, very rough, because she could have been 100 in the first dream, she could have been 45 or 55 in my, my friend's dream or vision. So it's an estimate, but it, but it definitely would seem to put us, you know, in the latter half of the latter end of this year, October, November, December, it makes sense, lines up, okay? Then we get to the 10 sticks dream. And um, this dream is, was posted on a channel called Great Miracles Avenue. Now in this channel, it's a little bit difficult to verify through the spirit, you know, uh, as we, as I try to apply the biblical criteria and I've had some comments on this channel of people saying, who are you to, to analyze and apply criteria to prophets of God and things like that. And I'm like, it's biblical criteria. The Bible tells us to test prophets. Jesus tells us to look at the fruit. These are biblical criteria. And it is the way to evaluate whether somebody is from God or not, period, okay? So um, not your feelings, not how much you like them, not how much you like their personality, not much, how, much, how, how big a fan you are. That's got nothing to do with it, okay? Um, anyways, the 10 six dream. So as I try to apply my criteria, the first one, the fruit of the Spirit is hard because people submit their dreams to this channel anonymously, okay? which on the other hand starts to fulfill starts to help me say well okay but they then meet the second criteria which is they seem humble or not attention seeking at least i guess they could be doing it just to see if it gets on the channel but in general i tend to give it credit because it's not from a major televangelist or pastor or something like that anyways i believe that there are a number of internal evidences within this dream, just the words of it, that tell me that the dream probably is from God. And if so, it is telling us 
that the 10th month of this year is going to be a hard year. Let's go ahead and listen to, uh, I'm going to play clips of it and talk about it. She starts off with scripture uh, from 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. The reason, she says, why I'm quoting this verse is that I know many brothers and sisters will probably doubt my message. However, I strongly believe this was given to me by the Most High God. Whoever has ears, and then the next part of that is whoever has ears to hear, she says, should listen. So I agree. It resonated on my heart when I listened to the dream, and I listened to her words, and then I got the transcripts. Um, she says, it's hard for me to have dreams and still remember them the following morning when I wake, but... The strange thing about this is I clearly remember every event that took place in my dream as if it happened in real life already. Um, okay, so she starts off and she's telling, and by the way, the reason you're seeing this version of this, this version you're seeing is not from the Great Miracle Avenue channel. It's from another lady who was impacted by the dream enough that she wrote down the words herself and is reading them. The reason I'm showing you that version is so you can see the words written down, but also because the Great Miracles Avenue version is a just random narrator with a foreign accent. It's not the original lady herself talking either. And I know I don't do this. I do listen to people with foreign accents, but I know a lot of Americans tend to uh, not give as much credibility when they hear uh, someone speaking with a foreign accent. So because of that, I'm showing this version just because knowing how uh, some people can be with that. Um, that said, here's the first evidences I have. She says, test the spirits. She quotes a Bible passage about false prophets. False prophets don't talk about verses about false prophets. They're too insecure or they know they're lying. So they don't want to draw attention to the fact they could be one. When someone says, hey, test the spirits. I know there's a lot of false prophets out there. You're, she's inviting you to go pray and ask God to confirm it himself through the Holy Spirit. That is a strong evidence. This is a, a sincere person. She also says, nobody's going to believe this, uh, but I feel compelled to do it anyway. So that is another internal evidence that she is sincere, okay, that she really had it. Uh, because false prophets don't say things like that. False prophets say, you must believe this. This is from God. How could, don't touch the prophets, okay? That's how false prophets speak. Uh, secondly, she notes, she says uh, in, a, in a statement of humility, that she has a lot of trouble remembering her dreams normally, but that this one was very vivid, okay? This one was very vivid, that it stood out as being very vivid. Um, that is a sign that a dream is from God when it's so vivid, like you feel like it was real life. So I'm seeing already a bunch of indicators that this person sincerely had this dream. And if, they, if I believe they had the dream, then I'm just looking at the internal symbolism to know still, is it a random dream or from God? So, in the dream, I was holding 10 sticks, five in my left hand and five in my right hand. I so just the fact that she specifies left hand versus right hand, while it's not conclusive by itself, it's another piece of evidence that this is possibly uh, probably a dream from God because it's biblically consistent. Now, most people uh, would, um, if they're talking about they have 10 sticks in their hands, we say I have 10 sticks in my hands, some in each hand, or I had five in one hand, five in the other, or I had five in each hand. They typically, naturally in language, would not specify five in my left, five in my right, okay? That precision seems to be inspired to because right hand is a biblical symbol for the good hand and the left hand is the unclean or the dirty hand right 
And later we see that the sticks in the right hand are better sticks and the sticks in the left hand are uh, worse sticks. So that lines up. And again, a lot of people don't know to get that detail right. They don't understand the difference between right hand and left hand in the Bible. Hand. I was standing in an open area that looked like a play field, but I couldn't see anything around apart from myself and the sticks that I was holding. There was no sound or noise, and there was no movement. I stood there for a while. Then suddenly I heard a voice that sounded like my husband's voice. The voice kept saying something which I couldn't hear or understand. The voice came from the back end of where I stood. I was stiff, and I couldn't even move a little finger. After Okay, so another internal evidence here. She is saying, I was so afraid, and I could not move. I couldn't move. Sounds very biblical and humble. I'll, I'll note like false prophets don't talk like that. Okay. They don't make themselves seem small, you know, frozen with fear. Um, for example, I talked about a dream uh, that uh, a false prophet named Dutch Sheets had uh, or said he had um, a while ago. And in it, he talks about how uh, there was this baseball game and he was the coach of the team and that <clears throat> he was managing the team in this fight against the devil and that at the end, uh, the owner called from the skybox, which is supposed to be God, and uh, which you see the passive role he assigns him and he calls and says, put Dutch in as the pinch hitter. So now... God is saying, Dutch, you're not only the coach of the team, you're the star player. That's a false prophet. That's how false prophets do it. Okay, they elevate themselves and make God seem a minor player. In this one, she is terrified and frozen, immobile, and is hearing thunder and sounds of judgment. And that is a sign of this was a dream from God. Okay. After just a few seconds, I heard a loud thunder strike, and I saw great lightning. Remember, this is her dream. Then suddenly, I heard a clear and audible voice from the sky. It was a masculine voice, and it was deeper than the first voice I heard, which I thought was Henry, my husband. The new so in the voices, um, at first she heard a muffled voice that she thought was her husband. She thought it sounded like her husband's, but she couldn't make out the words. And then boom, there's a thunderclap. And now there's a deep, deeper, more resonant voice that she's hearing clearly. I believe this is, this sounds like the way God would communicate symbolically. At first she thought it was her husband's voice because Jesus is her husband. He, you know, she's part of the bride of Christ. And so, but she couldn't make out the words until, boom, God the Father, his voice boomed in a thunderous clap, and now she can hear the voice of Christ clearly, and it's deeper and more powerful than her actual earthly husbands. Okay, so I believe that's the significance of that change. The new voice commanded me to drop the first five sticks I was holding on my right hand, and immediately I was released to move my hands. I dropped them down, then immediately I saw the sticks turn partially dry and partially fresh. I mean, part of it was dried and part of it was fresh. Then the voice, uh, let's see, then the voice said, these sticks on the ground represent the first five months of the year. Okay, so as it is now today, we're in the, f the fourth month. And so, so this dream is indicating uh, the first five months of the year, so up until May. It said there would be partially good times in this same month. Okay, but so the voice tells her to drop the first five sticks. She sees that they're, when she drops them, they're partially dry and partially green, I meaning partially still alive, full of life. And then the voice explains these represent the first five months of the year and that they will be still partially bad times, partially good times. So, and um, now here's a temptation. Okay, it's an assumption that this is 2023. I believe that it probably is. But notice, remember, the voice didn't say that. 
it said these are the first five months of the year, but it doesn't say which year, okay? However, I noticed that the first five months of this year have felt exactly like those sticks. Ups and downs, good times, bad times, things aren't too bad, the days are sunny. Um, you know, on one hand, uh, my daughter's graduating high school, uh, my son's coming home works from college. We're excited about that. On the other hand, I have uh, a friend from church whose uh, uh, son was just murdered. Well, not murdered in this case. I think it was probably justified, unfortunately, but killed by the police. Um, and I, there's another uh, couple at my church uh, who led small groups that were just murdered by their son. So bad times and good times mixed. That makes sense for how these last months have felt. Um, but just notice that it didn't say 2023, but I believe, and as this other lady believes, it probably is 2023, but obviously time will tell. Months, then the voice asked me to turn backwards and drop the other five sticks in my left hand. As soon as I did, that I saw the first four sticks vanish and it was left with the last one. The voice asked, what do I see on the last one? And I said it was completely dried. Then it said the elastic represents the 10th month of the year. And okay, so the next five sticks come out of her left hand. So I mean the bad months. And as we've said from the calendar dreams, from other things, we think that June is probably going to be a month of emphasis. Time will tell. Another reason I uh, think that is another friend of mine had a dream about um, the Starship, the Elon Musk rocket exploding. Now he sent this to he sent me this dream the Friday by email. I've got a time stamped email where he sent me this dream uh, the Friday before there was even known that there was going to be a launch. Okay, much less that it would explode. He sent me that dream on Friday. I forget the exact date. It was in April. And he said, man, I had this dream that, uh, you know, Elon Musk rocket, uh, like we were all having this picnic watching it and it went up and then it exploded. Like after about seven to 10, he said it was about seven to 10 seconds and it exploded. And he said it was like this supernova. And uh, then we were all running and trying to get away from the debris. And as I'm running away, he said, I heard, and this is an interesting detail that I'm still trying to figure out. Um, he said that as he was running away, he saw some a, a high level Amazon executive on the phone or an Amazon employee on the phone talking about how they were going to avoid all the fallout. What exactly that means? I guess time will also tell. But he saw that dream, sent it to me, timestamp before that happened. In fact, it wasn't until two days later, Sunday night, that the FF, FAA, sorry, the FFA, FAA gave Elon Musk permission to launch his rocket suddenly, which they were wanting to do, that he was wanting for a while. The Starship rocket was the largest rocket ever launched or tried to launch in US history. And so, there wasn't even a launch scheduled when my friend sent me this dream. Then uh, Monday, they tried to go ahead and launch, but something froze. One of the, the components froze. So they postponed it. Then they did launch it Wednesday and uh, it exploded. Okay, so it exploded, but it took a lot longer than my friend saw. So at first I was thinking that dream was a timing dream purely. I thought the seven to 10 seconds was a timing element because if you take one day is like a thousand years unto the Lord from scripture, then seven to 10 seconds represents about a month and a half, okay? And uh, so I thought, okay, well, whenever, so this is what I emailed him on Friday back before any of that happened. I said, well, that would seem to be, maybe what it's saying is a month and a half after um, the rocket blows up, there's going to be some, a big supernova of economic fallout. Um, that's kind of what I took from it, 
But then after it blew up, we thought, wow, well, maybe, um, maybe it's just literal. Maybe it's just a literal dream. But then that doesn't explain the Amazon part. And I'll tell you, I recorded an earlier version of this video uh, before that rocket exploded. Like the morning before it exploded, I recorded this and was talking about the same thing. So that kind of made me stop and I had to think and process this uh, and uh, come back around to it. But that said, that dream could be an indication again that June, something is going to happen in June, some big stuff. Time will tell. It is, this is very speculative, but it, it's the best information I have at this time. Anyways, that said, so um, now notice that she said, this is a curious part in the 10 stick stream. She said four sticks just disappeared. And the last stick was the 10th month and the voice focused on it and said that is the 10th month of this year and it was completely dry. Why did the four sticks disappear? Again, a false dream, someone making something up, a false prophet, would not make that an element of their dream because the lady clearly doesn't understand why they disappeared either. A false dreamer, a false prophet would invent some explanation for it, okay? But in this case, she doesn't know. And I'm not sure I know either, other than she was allowed to see the quality of life in all the first five sticks, but not in those four, which would be June through September. So perhaps there was details about those sticks that would have revealed things he wasn't ready to reveal. Or maybe, you know, I don't know. But all that was clear is the 10th month was completely dry. So whatever happens this summer, which I'm assuming is the beginning of more turbulence, and I don't believe that will uh, we'll have any restful months. I think what this is showing us is no restful months after from June on. I guess, again, time will tell. Um, but October would be the bad month, the one this this uh, is this voice is focusing on. And that, again, matches Coverstone, who had a specific October dream that he never said what year it was from. He never noticed exactly what year it was from. And that October, some very heavy things were happening, including financial things. All right. Let's see the next part. Then I saw another two sticks which came from nowhere to join the tenth stick. They also looked right. Then the voice said, these two also represent the 11th and the 12th month of the year. During this time, there will be so many hardships and crises. Uh, crises. Then he asked me to warn the rest and find safety in the Lord then I woke up. So Okay, so then two more sticks were added, 11th and 12th month, and they were very similar to the 10th. And the voice said, in those last months, there's going to be so many hardships and crises. Um, and that matches very well with Dana Coverstone's November dream and his Jan December, January dream. And December, January dream, remember, the finger just drug across it. Okay, that it lines up. There's a lot of data points lining up. And I've had other viewers email me with dreams talking about how they saw a calendar, they saw this, and they felt like something bad was happening in June or July. So here is my bet. So I've laid out the data. That's what I know. That's what I've got. If anybody's got any additional piece of information, by all means, send it to me so I can look at it and analyze it. Um, I'm expecting to be able to enjoy this May, okay? And I urge you to enjoy this May. I urge you to continue the preparations. You know, spiritually prepare yourself. What does that mean? Get more obedient. Become beautiful to Christ. Walk in faith. Faith is obedience. Learn to walk in faith. Learn to trust him with your hardships completely. Be in his word every day and be in daily prayer in a quiet time. Now, I had, did have some, uh, many people have talked to me, they said the Bible is difficult for them. They don't, uh, they don't uh, understand it always when they read it, and uh, or some things are hard to understand. Here's what I tell you. 
just read it every day. Start in Genesis, read some of the New Testament every day, try at least at this point, normally my advice is a chapter or two per day, okay? A chapter or two per day, but I'm gonna say in this day, maybe we need to be doing two, three, four chapters, especially if you're not familiar with his word yet, you need to be reading a lot to get caught up. And don't worry if you don't understand everything. You know why? Because uh, I guarantee you that whatever you had for breakfast today or lunch today, you did not tell your stomach what to do with it, did you? Did you tell your stomach, hey, that sandwich, uh, you know what, take that pastrami, go put it over there in my leg, and uh, this stuff, these elements you can take and put in the heart. You, know, you didn't tell your stomach what to do with it or your body. You don't need to. It already knows to do what to do without you. And that's what your soul knows to do, your spirit knows what to do with the Word of God. It knows how to digest the Word of God. So even though you don't understand everything, just read it. The first time I read the Bible, I didn't understand a lot of things. It was I was like, whoa, whoa, what's that? Okay, that's very common. But every time you read it again, more and more dots connect to each other, and, you, and the Spirit illuminates your mind, and you do begin to understand it. Okay. And I understand it very well now, after many years. But you have to be in it, and you have to keep going when you don't understand. Now, if you read the Bible, you open up, and none of it makes any sense to you, like you get nothing out of it, it doesn't minister to your spirit at all, you're probably not saved. That probably means you don't have the Holy Spirit in you. Almost certainly does. And then I would urge you, if that's the case, Repent of your sins, which means you go to God and you say, I want a new life. I want to stop my ways, my sinful ways. I want to, I'm sorry for them, Father. I'm asking your forgiveness through the blood of Christ. And I want to go a new direction following Jesus as my Lord and Savior, as my King. Trust in the blood and go a new way. That is how you're saved. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit fills you. Okay, and that's what makes the word come alive. If you just have trouble understanding some things, that doesn't mean you're not saved, okay? That's just growth, okay? Growth of understanding and knowledge. Sorry, my nose is itching. I'm, what I talked about is only for people who like understand nothing, and it means nothing, and doesn't inspire them, it doesn't reach them, okay? That's a sign of deadness. Okay, anyways, uh, oh, so that's what I would be doing right now. That and... We still have food in the grocery stores. You can go stock up, okay? You still can do that. If Noah had not built the ark, he would be dead, okay? There was no rain. Well, he would have died in the flood is what I meant. Of course, he'd still be dead now. It's been a long time. But there was no rain when God told him the flood was coming. He believed God when it was blue skies and acted. So right now you have a choice in front of you. Do you believe these warnings from God? Do you believe God is warning us? Your actions will prove your faith. If you believe, you will go store up food. If you don't store up food, it's because you don't believe, period. And that would be like Noah not building an ark, in my opinion. So here's what I'm expecting. I think May, uh, you can enjoy it. I think June, you're gonna start seeing uh, heavy things happen is what I'm expecting. Um, don't know what exactly. Definitely something financial. Uh, definitely commercial real estate loans are coming up. They're not gonna be renewed. Banks don't have the money to lend them. There's definitely some economic stuff gonna be happening in June. Uh, with Russia, Ukraine, I don't know. With political exposure, I think all of that's going to move forward another level. We'll see. I wouldn't, but that's not the boom. That doesn't happen until later this year, I believe. I believe it's going to keep getting boom, 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 bad, bad, bad until October. It gets really bad. November and December, January are hardships. If all of that is not this year, then I guess I would expect it the following year. Uh, I'd really be surprised if we go past 2024 without this stuff happening. Um, anyways, 
that is what I have for you today. I uh, hope it helps. Um, just trying to offer guidance as a watchman, trying to warn as I can, trying to teach. And uh, I hope it's been a blessing, especially knowing you can enjoy May. I'm pretty confident you can enjoy May. All right, so you guys have a great day and we will see you soon.